It said it's good to see this crowd out this morning. Such a hot day on a sad occasion. But these things happen. I'd like to pay our final respects to Oral Daniel Bud Spivey. The address of 4452 McDaniel Street, Wake Ross, Georgia. <clears throat> Date of birth, May the, Monday, May the 11th, 1953. Place of birth, Homoville, Georgia. Date of death, Tuesday, August the 25th, 2020. Place of death, Wake Ross, Georgia. Age 67 years, three months and 14 days. Date of funeral, Friday, August the 28th, 2020. Time of funeral, 10.30 a.m., place of funeral, graveside, terminal at Franklin Holness Baptist Cemetery, Reverend Harold Barnes. <clears throat> Wife of 21 years, Rose Music Spivey of Wellsboro. Three sons, Kyle and Lisa of Ambrose. <clears throat> okay, Kevin, I'm sorry. Kyle Spivey and Terrier of Douglas. Jason Anderson of Des Moines, Iowa. Stepson, Philip Mixon, former wife, Kim of Millwood. Grandchildren, Brandon Anderson, Carmen Raylan, Stella, Elena Spivey, Austin and Mason Dixon. <clears throat> Sister, Geneva Youngblood of Blackshear, numbers of nieces and nephews. Someday when I've traveled my last mile here, the call will be coming for me. I'll enter the lifeboat that will be near to carry me over death's sea. Hold to my hand, hold to my hand, to my hand, to my hand as over this river I go. Safe I shall be, safe I shall be. My boat should sail safely, though waves dash high, for Jesus will be at my side. He'll steal the rough waters when by and by, while crossing this river so wide. shall be, safe I shall be, in heaven the home of the soul. I'm ready to go to that golden shore to leave while the ages shall see mother and saints of old in heaven the home of the soul hold to my hand hold to my hand as over death's river shall be, safe I shall be, in heaven the home of the soul. Hold to my hand, hold to my hand, as over death's river I go. 
Safe I shall be, safe I shall be, in heaven the home of the I found that on occasions like this, I, I've never been able to have the words to speak that I felt like was sufficient. <clears throat> but Scripture bears out the fact that, that time and chance happen to us all. So <clears throat> these Scriptures I'd like to share with you this morning, uh, anything I say or do, whatever I may, may accomplish, it's not going to hurt or help Bud in any way. He's gone. I can't talk to him this morning, but I'd like to talk to you just a few moments of time. Uh, share with you a couple of scriptures that I feel the Lord has placed upon our minds. Be found in the Psalms, the 39th chapter, 4th and 5th verse. He says, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Now, David weren't saying, Lord, let me know how long I'm going to live or when I'm going to die. <clears throat> but he answered his question, maybe that next verse that I'm fixing to read to you. But <clears throat> David was simply saying, Lord, let me know my end that I might prepare for it. And it's coming to all of us at some point in life. And really, we don't have to be sick to pass away. You know, I, I've seen them just, just fall out. Or I didn't see them, but I, 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 uh, I heard of how they passed it went on. But this morning in that fifth verse is what I'd like to talk to you about. He said, Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breath. In the Old Testament, a span, and or I believe it is, is what they call a hand breath, uh, and it's a very short period of time if you look at your hand. But <clears throat> David was saying, and said, and, and a hand breath in mine age is as nothing before thee. In other words, age and time don't mean nothing with God. He can make all he wants to of it. <clears throat> But we are all allotted. Scripture bears out the fact that we're allotted three score and ten, which is 70 years. But you see, God didn't promise we was going to make it that far. Bud didn't quite make it. I'm 74. I'm living on borrowed time. I don't know when my end might come. But the thing about it, it could be as David, he said, Lord, let me know the days of my life <clears throat> and how frail I am. A man and a woman at the very peak of a life that when they're at their strongest health, that when they're at their peak of life, that they're enjoying everything about life. And believe me, Bud enjoyed life. We went on many, many vacations together. Me and him took a trip out west. It was going 29 days together. We just spent a lot of time together when he was able. <clears throat> but the appointed time come to him. And we've all have that appointed time. <clears throat> but being in the hand breath, we look and we can see every day the measurement that David was talking about. When we wash our face, when we feed ourselves, when we put on our shoes, when we're working, we're looking at the hand breath that David was talking about. <clears throat> but God can extend them times, or he can shorten those times. Praise God. But there is a time that we're going having to go. <clears throat> a point in time that we're going to have to stand in the presence of, of an almighty God. 
Death to a wicked man in this life is the end of all joys. But death to a righteous man is the end of all grief. <clears throat> Joshua said, choose you this day whom you'll serve. So we, you know, we have a choice every day. We have to make that choice. <clears throat> but they, uh, 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 Bud made his choice. And I, I'm, just to be honest with you this morning, I don't know how he stood with God. It had been months since I've been able to see him. I talked to him on the phone or I was smart, and a few days ago I talked to him. <clears throat> you know what? He was crying and praising God. So to me, I, you know, that's an encouragement to me. But this morning, me and you are standing here, and we still owe the debt that he has paid. <clears throat> A time appointed. Make me know the length of my days and how frail I am. It don't matter how, how high we get in life or how good our health we're in, we are still always frail to that thing called death. Amen. I, I would like to share with you a couple of stories that <laughs> maybe will lighten up your day a little bit. And I said we went on many, many vacations together, and probably it's been 20 years ago. But <clears throat> we went on, me and Bud and my brother, older brother, and, and, and there was another or two with us. I can't remember all of them, but we decided we'd go rafting in the Smokies. You know, we, me and Bud, all we, we always enjoyed such as that. So we, we got us a rafting trip down the Little Pigeon River. The man said, one of you got to be captain. You know, you, somebody got to be head of the crew. So Bud said, I'll do that. So he had to sit in the very back of the boat. And he was a guide in the boat with his paddle, you know, and this and that and the other. And some reason or other, we drifted over towards the edge. And we got hung up. The boat wouldn't go to worse, so Bud, he got to try to get the thing to move. Well, about the time the boat moved, both feet went over his head, and he went out the back of the boat. You know? <laughs> now, I'm talking about if you've ever been in the rivers in, in North Carolina, the water's cold any time of the year you go in, it's cold. <laughs> so he got cooled off. But my older brother says, and we got to laughing, you know. He says, no, 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 don't laugh at him. He may get mad. I said, not Bud. Bud ain't going to get mad. <laughs> but we had a big laugh off of it, you know, just, just enjoying life and, 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 and things like that. But. But the other thing is, years ago when I was dating his sister Marie, and you know, before we ever got married, I had an old 55 Ford car, and uh, I decided I just wanted to paint the wheels red on that thing. I painted the wheels red and went back over one day to see Marie, and Bud asked me, said, why'd you paint your wheels red? Well, about the first thing popped about mine, I said, it makes it run 10 miles an hour faster. So a few days, he got around to his daddy and said, Daddy, we got to paint the wheels on your truck red. He said, Son, what in the world we got to paint the wheels red on the truck for? He said, Well, it'll just make it run 10 miles an hour faster. So, you know, things in life, me and him have been through a lot, and, and, and he's been a great brother-in-law to me. He's been a friend to me. When I needed a friend, he was there. If he could get to me, he'd come to me. Just a few months ago, when I was in sickness and, 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 and got so down so low, I couldn't even put my feet on, feet on the bed. But he would come to see me and visit me, check on me, see how I was doing. He was always concerned about somebody else and not just himself, but he was a great friend to me. And I'd like to say this morning that he was a friend to anybody that would let him be, uh, a good neighbor, just a good person in my book. And I, I, I'm there again. I don't know how he stood with God. I, I, I hope he stood right with God. But on the other hand, every time you think or look at your hand, think about the span that David was talking about. Now, God can spread it out. Or he can draw it together. But when we look at it, 
There's nothing we can do with that. It's just set there. And it's appointed time. Praise God. What are you saying? Lord, let me know that I may consider my end. What he was simply saying, Lord, let me to be ready to go. May God bless you. May God bless this family, this wife and these children, grandchildren and in-laws and outlaws and whatever. But may God ever bless you and touch your hearts and your minds and help you to look up. As David said, look to the hills from which cometh your help. I've told these boys if they need me, call me, and I, I would go to them if I could. But there's one greater than I that we need to look to. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us pray. Father, as we come to this time of this service, realizing this morning that we've gone just as far as we could go with Bud. Life as he known it is past and gone. And we're left here, Lord, to bear the grief. But I'm asking you, Lord, to strengthen this family. Lord, to help them day by day by the Spirit of God to touch your hearts and the minds and the lives with your divine Spirit. Help them to look at that hand breath, Lord, that measure of life that David was seeing. I pray, God, that from this day forward that you would deal with the hearts and the minds of the lost in this world, that they could see the need of God. Touch his family with your spirit, God, and encourage them. Strengthen them when they'd like to talk to daddy or husband or grandfather, that your presence, Lord, would be with them, that it would touch them and encourage their hearts and make their lives, Lord, once again, the sun to shine, and they could see that there is a reality and that there is a real God. Pray, God, that you'd ever strengthen them and uplift them and strengthen them along the way that the will of God could be done. Comfort them, we will, Lord, we pray, and give them strength to look to you in the time of need, in the time of darkness and sorrow. Oh, for, Lord, you said you are the strength. Lord, there's the help that cometh from above. Help us, God, to look to thee, to hold to that unchanging hand, to be faithful unto death, and that is accomplished in this life. Lord, help us to praise you for it all. For in Jesus' name we pray, and amen. Praise God.